It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and it's Walkabout Wednesday and it's still October. No, it's not. It's November. Wow. Yikes, am I right? Um, yeah, it's actually early November now, but still warm here in Chula Vista. We've been having a really thick marine layer at night and fog in the morning so everything looks wet and the succulents are just loving it. I mean, seriously, look, look, look. I really thought that I was gonna start to see some decline in the Euphorbia family back here, that some, you know, the weather would be cool enough at night that leaves would be falling off and, but no, I mean, this Millii has never looked happier. Um, the succulent gutters, oh God, just defy expectation all the time. I am so excited too for these Morganianum, these, these sedum cuttings that I got to really get rooted in. I mean, they're starting, look at that, that pretty new growth. You know, I don't know what to say about this. I laid this down like this so that the stem would have an opportunity to root into the soil um, before, you know, I laid it out. Uh, and I'll let this ride just a little longer, but if this doesn't regenerate to my satisfaction, I may cut tops and, and do some resetting. But the jury is still out on that. I mean, look at the difference between, you know, a really well-rooted, happy, plump Morganianum and one that isn't. There's no contest. So we'll see how that goes. But I mean, just look at this. Look at how these plants have knit together up here. Sedevaria and a little Crassula platyphylla there. You can't, I mean, that's just mother nature. I can't even do this. That's all her. Good grief. This little aloe is really struggling, this cutting. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna, what's gonna happen with that. We'll have to kind of watch and see if it regenerates, but the color is fantastic. I love it. My my little euphorbia here has thrown off a late season bloom. I mean that color, it's impossible, isn't it? It's so vibrant. And I've got a little snail. Ew. I don't know. I don't understand you snail. Why are you climbing up the cactus? Um, yeah, yuck. No, thank you. Uh, Gosh sakes, yeah, the little, the little um, cornucopia that I planted out in cuttings looks fantastic. That's all rooted now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, we got a little bit of rain and succulents prefer soil that's a little bit on the alkaline side. And the rain is a little bit alkaline and it releases some nutrients and nitrogen in the soil. So the succulents always tend to look a little more vibrant and fabulous after a little bit of rain. And, you know, my little collection is no exception to that rule. Look at this Euphorbia milii variegate threw off. It's a, it's a non-variegated branch, but look at that flower. Isn't that so beautiful? The color is so stunning. The Bougainvillea pot, all of these fat, fabulous succulents here that are just so, so thrilled with life. Oh my gosh. Uh, I did a little Instagram post, Where's Waldo, uh, to show my followers at Laura Love Succulents my succulent mushroom, or not my succulent mushroom, but my talavera mushroom, and how my crassula undulata has pretty much covered it up. We went together and redid that whole pond area last March, I believe it was, on Walkabout Wednesday and the preceding and you know also days after when we were on lockdown. But I'm thinking we might we might have to get in there again uh, and go after some 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 plants because that's this is looking a little run amucky isn't it some of you had asked after last week's walkabout if I would show you how I water my succulents and 
I don't recommend this method for everybody. It really just depends on where you live and how much natural rainfall you get, the time of year, how hot it is. But I, my succulents are still very, very much awake and some of them more so than others. I mean, look at those aeoniums back there against the prison wall and this Kalanchoe orgialis. The bougainvillea is putting on its final show so, I mean, this is just how I do it. I just go take the hose and I go through and I just sort of shower everything off. It's kind of instinctual in my garden. You know, I know what needs water and what might not. I, I avoid things like the cactus over in the corner there, the gayi here, the pacopodium and the agave. I don't want to get these too wet. They don't need it. I have noticed that the Aluaudia procera really benefits from some water when it is actively growing. And you know it's actively growing when you've got growth way up here at the top. You've got little... Oh, am I getting you wet, Greg? I'm so, I'm so into what I'm doing, I'm not even paying attention to poor Greg. I'm getting him all wet. So sorry. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I know what I can, what I can put water on. Look at this Kalanchoe Lucier down here, Greg. Isn't that so exceptional right there? And that's a little mangave next to it. It was given to me by my dear friend Randy from Sea Greenscapes. Um, it was given to me as a cutting and it's starting to root and I noticed throw off some new leaves. So I'm really, really excited about that. This, all of this in here is you know, sweet alyssum, and it's, here's some that's in bloom right there. This whole thing will be a riot of alyssum. I always hit my pots when I water, and, and I water usually once or twice a week, kind of depending on my mood and what the weather's been doing. If it's been particularly dry, I might go twice. Uh, if, it's, if it's been, you know, really cool or, or rainy, I might dial it in and just go once. But, you know, I'm always trying to hit the bougainvillea, in particular, um, without offending, you know, some of the more sensitive plants around it, like in the summer, I'm careful not to overdo it uh, with the aeoniums for fear that they might, they might rot. But we're out of that now, and the aeoniums are waking up. Aren't yours looking great in your gardens, too? My topsy-turvy, this gets hit every single time I water because the pots tend to dry out really quick. My little arrangements, like this shell and the little pots underneath. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. I've even started watering that aloe banesii back in the corner a little bit since it's starting to wake up and branch out and show new signs of life. I'm always mindful to hit this little cactus up here in the Marsha Rafter hanging pot, as well as my roses that are in the purple boxes that Greg made me all those years ago. These are Eden climbers and I just love, 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 love these roses. I've got succulents growing in the boxes with the roses. I'm, I water and feed these pretty heavily and the succulents have never seemed to care one bit. Uh, my fountain, of course, gets hit the top more than the bottom because it dries out faster. There's less depth and less soil. I mean, you can see here these Morganionum, you know, are pretty yellow still. They really need to color up. You know, I keep threatening to apply some fertilizer to my succulents. I have never, ever done that before. Just mainly because I'm really lazy. I mean, there's not really any good reason for it. That, and most of the time, they just look so darn good. I don't see the point. But in situations like this where I might want to see you know, see some color, uh, I might just go and get some cactus and succulent fertilizer and, and give them a little help. Who knows? You know, in things like this, Pilosoceros azurus in this pot here, I'm going to be really gentle. I might not hit this at all uh, for, you know, weeks on end. It just absolutely doesn't need it. But goodness sakes, it feels so good to kind of rinse everything off, rinse off all the spider webs, all the dust, you know, any little bugs that might have attached themselves to my plants. The raised bed garden is another element. I'm uh, kinked here. 
then I want to make sure that I hit. I was really, really careful though with this crested aeonium not to overdo it. And I also planted the crest up on a mound just to be sure that it would drain well. I absolutely did not want to rot this gorgeous plant. And I didn't. And it's starting to look really lively too. The ruchia here is absolutely thriving in my in my garden. And yeah, so you know that's that's kind of the kind of what I do. I'm still waiting for results. The lemon tree is ugh, it still looks like crap. It it's been almost two weeks since I applied this soil enhancer. And I haven't seen any results yet from applying that soil enhancer. I'm going to give it one more dose next week. I keep looking for new growth because, you know, that's how you can kind of tell if, if things are happening. And the issue with the lemon right now, you know, and it's been watered well, is it's not growing. It's not throwing off any new leaves or new branches. So I can't really gauge what's happening. Um, but I'm not ready to give up on it. So we're going we're gonna to go uh, to fertilizing next. If this doesn't give me, the soil enhancer doesn't give me any results, um, we will also try, try some fertilizer with some iron, chelated iron in it. Okay. Then, this is the world's worst hose. I am telling you. Okay, this is all alyssum in here too. And you can kind of see why it takes off because I'm standing here trying to fix my hose and the water's just pouring along this edge. But I want to make sure that I hit my gutters. Look at those California sunsets, whoa. Get those hit really well because these dry out real fast. There is soil in here. I have also successfully planted gutters with in sphagnum moss. Um, but these are I guess they're kind of a a combo. I've got I've got moss in there too. And then my pink jasmine down here in the blue pot. I want to make sure I hit that every time. Not a succulent, but it's going to be fantastic when it covers up that trellis and hides my trash cans. Then some of you have probably noticed. All of these plants here along the wall I'm going to be heading up to Fountain Valley next week for a beautiful epic front yard installation with a dry stream I've I've pulled plants from Waterwise I've pulled plants from Sun Valley um, this is just a few of the plants that I got from Oasis Water Efficient Oh my gosh, I am so excited to get up there and tear into that installation. Uh, the aloe that rotted, you know, that I put in the pot, it is still way as tempting as it is. It's still way too soon to pull this out and to see if anything is happening. I did notice that my aloe plicatillus here had rooted last week we checked in on it and it had thrown off some roots so that's exciting and I know you know those of you that are way more of an expert than I am have told me that this is probably going to die um, but I'm going to keep the faith guys you just never know right uh, something else that I wanted to show you you ask about the little toolbox the fishing box planter and wow you know i don't remember exactly when we planted this out it's been a while hasn't it and i have just ignored this thing you can see here that this is getting really rusty look at this it's like literally falling apart so i'm gonna have to probably take everything out of here pretty soon and get rid of this and and make something else but this just goes to show you how extraordinarily tough these plants are Look at how the sedum rubertinctum have grown. These were just cuttings in, in moss and a little bit of, I think it's kind of a moss and soil combo in here too. And despite the fact that it gets nothing, it is absolutely thriving. Just so beautiful. All of the plants in the garden right now are just absolutely spectacular. So 
gosh, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. I clearly need to get out here and pick bougainvillea leaves up. I've also, you know, since we did have a little bit of rain. Hey, Bentley. Hey, buddy. Since we did have a little bit of rain, I've got some little annoying um, broadleaf weeds, right, that need pulled. But because the ground is so soft, it's so rewarding to get a little bucket and to come out here and just pull these little weeds. I'm able to get them. No, Bentley. I'm able to get them by the roots so easily. And, you know, for those of you that have small, tight gardens like mine, you know what I'm saying. This is so rewarding. For those of you that have giant spaces and it's just completely exhausting and overwhelming and makes you want to cry, um, you know, you might want to take a chemical treatment to, to your weeds. But if you're at all able, I really encourage mechanically just pulling them. It's the most rewarding thing that you'll do today. And his little medio picta just perfection this will go to a client here pretty soon once it gets a little bit bigger because it's really crowding my um, echeveria agavoides and this wow this little cynthia giddy aloe oh man honestly i could just stay out here in this little area right here where i stand or squat and spend an hour or more just meticulously cleaning up a little tiny area and sometimes that's what you need to do it's just absolute therapy just to take a little area in your garden and make it great so it's been fun to see you guys this week on walkabout wednesday we'll catch up with you again next week when we're up in fountain valley until then take advantage of fall get out in your gardens and have some fun this has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with Walkabout Wednesday and your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.